Good afternoon, everyone, and VNTV. Happy Thursday. This is Dana Chang. Before I introduce you to our return guest, I would like to share my thought with you while searching him on the internet. After reading about his background and his long accomplishment, I start to think I have not done much compared to what he has done to the community around him and the people he has encountered throughout his time as being a new version of himself. His name is Jeff Lotnick, the founder and the CEO of the Meditation Initiative. Hello, Jeff. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you for and having me. It's my pleasure to be here An today honor. with you. Thank you. Could you like to tell the NTV and everybody about yourself, a little bit about yourself? Let's see, about myself. So as I always say, I'm just a Jewish kid from San Diego, I grew up in Del Cerro. And I grew up kind of an angry, depressed kid and uh, went to college at Arizona and got into learning about meditation and Buddhism and went on kind of a consulting journey, career for seven to ten years, thinking that if I made lots of money and bought lots of stuff that I would end up being very happy. Sure. And I found myself, uh, you know, 28 years old with uh, lots of money, lots of stuff, and still pretty depressed. So about 16 years ago, uh, I started uh, going to a Buddhist temple here in San Diego. Uh, I started taking meditation into prisons, and then uh, in 2005, moved to a monastery in Taiwan, and I lived kind of Zen monk life. Uh, I wasn't a monk, I'm not a monk, but I lived with them for 11 months. And uh, at that point, towards the end, uh, my master said, how are you doing? And I said, great. And she said, it's time for you to go. And I said, no, wait, I, I love it here. You know, I got no money, no keys, no wallet, no phone. I don't want to go anywhere. And she said, you must leave. You must go back to where you're from and figure out how to bring the practices that you've learned, the mindset that you've learned, the uh, really learning how to be humble and, and live a gentle life. Share that with the people that you understand and that you know best. So you know, in life, and I always um, share with all the kids that I help, mm. and, and my daughter, and everybody that I know, is that when you finally found the purpose of you being here, right. you're free. Yes. Then you're yes. never depressed and sad anymore. Yes. And, and so before I, I go into asking you a question about mm. your journey, I would like to ask you a favor. Mm. So I'm going to ask you to read. Yes. The couple of quote that uh, one of your former classmates, Eric Stewart. Yes, Stoyer, yes. Who you bully in high school. Yes. The reason I brought this quote because I believe that it's some of many missing pieces in mm -hmm. our children's life. Mm -hmm. What's even more important now in this society with social media? So yes. please Please read that three Yeah, phone. definitely. And this, this comes from an article that Eric wrote for Southwest Magazine uh, titled The Bully and the Buddhist. Mm -hmm. And we reconnected years ago as friends. And he started to interview me and then eventually wrote just an incredible, beautiful piece about um, the impact my actions had on him and how our lives are today uh, from really our childhood. It's weird, I know, Jeff said, but you just never know what people are dealing with inside. Eric said, he listened to people tell him that he had hurt them. He didn't make excuses, he just heard them out. I knew I was still a powerful person, someone who wanted to win, he said, but there's nothing to win in Buddhism. So I figured I would use that part of my personality to make positive change after having affected people negatively for a long time. And I love those quotes, and we can come back to that mm. one, but let's start my question with you, uh, to you, right? So the first question is, as an age of 27, mm. You were very successful and seemed very happy. Yes. Can you tell me what happened at that point? Which mm. I believe is your turning point Yes. to a new you. Yes. Well, there was, there was one night specifically. I remember uh, in 2003 that I had gone to this Buddhist temple. And I remember just sitting down and looking up at this big statue and f just overwhelming feeling of, I've, I'm home. This is where I need to be. And I talked to the nun afterwards and I said, I'll be back tomorrow. And six months went by and I never went back. And then I'm out one night, uh, and this is for me was kind of the turning point. And I was with That's friends. That's the key, we always have to make time. Yeah, it, yes. We make, never yeah. have time. I said, I'll always be back. And then time. six months yes. later, I, I didn't show up. Okay. So I was out one night uh, at a club downtown with my friends, Kevin and Kevin and Brian, and it was Kevin's birthday. And I had this whole realization standing in line. Uh, it was on Broadway, this old club used to be down there. And I had this kind of, like thought, that's all it was, that, okay, I'm in line, I have no patience, 
I have money, so I'm going to pay the person in the VIP line a bunch of money to let us there. And I read that too. You saw that, so yeah. Funny. And yeah. then I'm going to get in the line, and then I'm going to pay more money to get us all in, and then I'm going to buy us drinks all night. We're going to get drunk. I'm going to chase some girl around. I'm going to wake up the next day by myself or with somebody, and I'm going to feel like crap. So I had that thought in about 20 seconds, and then the night continued. And that's exactly what happened. Everything that I thought would happen is what happened because I'd done it so many times. So when I woke up the next day at noon, right, it was a long night, I woke up by myself at noon, and the first thought I had was I have a headache, and the second thought I had was I need to go back to that temple. And that was uh, towards the end of 2003. And so I was, what, at that time, 28 years old, I went back to that temple, and at that, literally at that day, I said I was done. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a drug addict, I wasn't an alcoholic, I didn't have a very heavy traumatic past at all. If you could name one thing about Buddhism mm. that have helped you to become the new you today, mm. what could it be? I think that, I always joke, but I mean it seriously, all Buddhism did is it brought me back to actually paying attention and listening to everything my parents taught me. <laughs> when I was a child, right? I mean, I grew up very privileged, very spoiled here in Del Cerro, you know, wonderful family. My parents have been married 52 years. But for some reason later on in life, it took the framework of what I call Buddhism to bring me back to kind of that very simple way of seeing the world. And the one thing specifically is I spent most of my life thinking that my views were correct and that I was right and that I had to be the best at everything. And so the Buddhist teachings taught me to understand that every person has their own views of the world. And, and as long as I stick with mine and I try to defend my views constantly thinking I'm right, my heart is very closed, my mind is very closed, and it doesn't allow me to even understand anyone. I believe that all the angels come into our life mm. in different forms. Mm -hmm. I speak from my own experience, <laughs> and it wasn't for them, I couldn't be here today right. talking to you. Mm. Who could you say you, that they, are your, they were your angels mm. or your savior mm. to help you mm. to find yourself? I think at, um, you know, at that point in my life, in 2003, there was, her name was Venerable Yijer, and she was, is a Taiwanese Buddhist nun mm -hmm. and has been for uh, probably now over 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive me if I got those numbers wrong. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but, um, but she was that person. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been yes. a long time. Yes. And, and uh, she became a nun when she was 23. And uh, she was that person that, it's very easy to say she was that person that made me feel comfortable learning about Buddhism. But at the same time, she was the one person that actually made me feel comfortable with everyone. And so that was where I had to learn to, as you say, find a tremendous amount of gratitude for everything my parents gave me, the mm -hmm. community I was raised in, uh, and just be grateful for everyone. And truly listen. And truly listen. Yeah, that's Grateful the key. for everyone mm -hmm. that was in my life mm -hmm. and truly listen. But without that feeling of comfort at that location, at that temple at that time, I would have just stayed, I think, lost in thinking that if I had more, I would be happy. And it's so much different from the life you have because staying in a temple is mm. minimal. Right. You have right. basically nothing. Right. right. I went Just from yourself. houses to cars and lots of TVs and to cool nothing. stuff to no money, no wallet, no keys, nothing. And so my last question to you is how does it feel to be able to convert the negative Jeff mm. to the positive Jeff? Yeah. But because I, the social media impact our children in the society. So what really the message that you mm. want to share with mm. them? You know, I do, I speak, and since the article came out, I, I did a lot of, uh, I've been going into schools for years, uh, and when the article came out, it really gave me an opportunity to talk more about the bullying aspect of, you know, what I was feeling and what I was thinking as a bully, uh, and that it's not, the person being bullied, it has nothing to do with them, that it's not their fault, they haven't done anything wrong, the things that the bully is saying to you in most cases are not even true. Mm -hmm. They're just things that we are doing to make ourselves feel so better. That, it's a because, reverse psychology. Correct. Think, we don't yes, feel good yeah. about ourselves mm -hmm. at that stage, so mm -hmm. if we put somebody else down, then it elevates us, right? Yes. And so I think that, you know, and a, a lot of it is in this quote, you know, a, a powerful person being someone who, who does have privilege is in a position of power and leadership quite a bit, that I can take 
all of that energy and aggression and anger that I used to have as mm -hmm. a child and transform it into a mind and heart filled with love and compassion and kindness, but, but stay as engaged in the community and society as possible. And so to just transform the same, uh, just the same energy, the same... Definitely. It's like that negative energy that you put so much in, you can always convert it. Correct. In a positive energy. Correct. And you, I believe in second chance. Yes. And you are very lucky. <laughs> yes. You got your second chance. Yes. It's in my honor and my privilege to spend my Thursday morning with you. <laughs> I, I think I have learned so much from you mm. and make me a much more humble person today than yesterday. Thank you. And thank I you again. It. And definitely we will get into the meditation technique that uh, Jeff used to help a lot of people to go through depression, stress, and to find yourself. And please st stay tuned for that. Thank you so much and have a great, fabulous day. Thank you. So hi, so uh, my name is Jeff Zlotnick. I am co-founder and executive director of the Dharma Bum Temple here in San Diego. And uh, it's really uh, beautiful to be here with VNTV today. And I'm going to lead us all in a brief meditation practice. So a couple things I'll tell you before we begin. Uh, nothing's going to happen to you, okay? Uh, you're not going to float away, unfortunately. Uh, you're not going to have any mystical, magical experiences. Uh, no, you're not, you're not going to float. You might even fall asleep, but I will do my best to keep you awake, right? Don't judge your practice. What I mean by that is we judge things all day long, what we look like, what we wear, what we eat. We're constantly in these judgment modes. And the practice of meditation is really learning to just sit and breathe. Also, you won't think nothing. Often people think that meditation means you're going to think nothing or that your mind is going to go blank. You'd end up sitting there telling yourself, think nothing, think nothing, think nothing. <laughs> it's a waste of time, right? Sure. So um, your mind's going to keep racing. Uh, posture, you just want to be comfortable. I'm not so big on crossing the legs and holding the fingers in certain ways, right? Anyone who does that, that's great. But to me, it's just comfortable. So these chairs, you just kind of want to sit up straight. Um, hands can be on the knees or in the lap, whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, I'll suggest closing the eyes if that's comfortable. Mouth is open or closed, whatever is comfortable. I will guide us as we begin. We'll settle into a little bit of silence and we'll be done in about three hours. <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs> All right, so again, starting with the eyes closed if comfortable. Mouth open or closed. We'll start with taking three deep breaths, slowly. And eventually, you'll settle into a natural rhythm of the breath. Knowing throughout the practice, you'll hear sounds. These are not distractions, not disruptions. Simply what's happening around us as we sit. Noticing the mind as it wanders, jumping from thought to thought. Start with gently guiding your attention, focus to the stomach or chest. Breathing in, feel them rise. Breathing out, they fall. You're simply going to continue this practice Breathing in, follow breath in. Breathing out, follow breath out. Letting go of expectations or judgments from the practice. Just sitting, breathing. And with the body still, rested, 
in the speech, quiet, aware of all sounds. And the mind, learning to settle, know what it's like to just sit. Knowing with each breath, there's nothing else to do. Nowhere else to go. No one else to be. Everything beautiful, just as it is. Sitting, breathing. And once again, taking three deep breaths, slowly. ready, slowly open the eyes, slowly begin to move, and most important with the practice of meditation is to recognize how you feel now, immediately after, compare this to how you typically feel throughout your day. Recognize the difference and ask yourselves how you'd prefer to feel every day for the rest of your life. And realize whatever you feel now, if it's quiet, calm, or still, whatever you're sitting with, it's not because of anything I said. It has nothing to do with anything but our own mind. Thank so thank you. you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.